Good morning, guys. Larry the Tractor Guy. Hey, it is getting closer and closer to harvest out here in southwest Oklahoma. Uh, the wheat's turning really, really fast since we've been getting some higher temperatures. And uh, we're trying to get combines ready. Um, we've got cotton planting fixing to start. So we've got a lot of planters to look at. Um, we got a lot of guys that are planting milo right now. Uh, we got a lot of spraying going on. So we got several things going on at one time, a lot of equipment to work on. Um, I got a customer that called in. I believe he's doing a little bit of planting uh, this morning, planting some milo, and he's got an 8335 with an oil leak on the front. And so we're gonna run down and see if we can get him going this morning. So there's our 8335R with an oil leak we're pulling up on now. And it looks like uh, we've got pretty good little rain out here in this field. And uh, so we're gonna get over and check this out and see what kind of oil leak we have. Okay, so I've raised the hood here and kind of done a little bit of investigating and there's a lot of oil spatter on the windows and sort of on the tractor, but it looks like his oil leaks up here in the front. And this is an ILS tractor, so it's got independent link suspension. And uh, kind of looking under here, underneath the front, because there was a lot of oil on the ground here as you can see and it looks like there's oil right around this bracket here that kind of protects this ILS valve and so we're going to start the tractor up and do a little in further investigating here and see what this oil leak is. I suspect what I'm going to find is a valve of some sort maybe a check valve or an o-ring or something like that on the ILS valve, okay? So we're gonna start that up, take a look at that real quick. And I'm gonna show you what I found here on this oil leak on this 8340, 8335R. And I'm gonna try to get up in here where you can see. Okay, so we've got oil leaking right out of the bottom of this ILS valve, if you can see that, okay? I suspect we've got a blown O-ring on a check valve. So keep in mind on this, on these ILS suspension tractors, and I tell customers this all the time, that um, do not remove hoses or lines on that ILS prior to bleeding those ILS cylinders, okay? Because this tractor will come down pretty close to the ground when we, when we bleed that valve. So if we were to remove one of those valves or remove one of these suspension hoses. Okay, well we could cause this tractor to fall in an area that we don't want to be when this tractor comes down. Okay, just keep that in mind. So we're gonna remove those shields and take a quick look at this. So we have our shields removed. Okay, and if you can see there, that valve, or actually, I believe that's a screen. And I think it may be even like a check valve. And so we'll look that up in Service Advisor in a few moments, but that's where our leak is. And I can see the O-ring kind of pulled out of there, sticking out around that cap there, okay? And so we do have pressure on our ILS right now. These two valves right here, these are your two valves to relieve the pressure on the ILS system. Okay, and so this valve would be the barrel end of the ILS cylinder, which would be this side of the cylinder. That valve will relieve the pressure on the barrel end of the cylinder, okay? And the right valve, okay, will release the ILS pressure on the rod end of the ILS cylinder, okay? And so basically that holds this tractor up and gives this tractor front end suspension. When you relieve those, you want to be pretty clear of, you know, being underneath the tractor. So I kind of stand out beside the tractor, okay, and when I relieve that pressure. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. So we're going to go ahead and relieve our barrel end of our cylinder, okay. Now watch what happens, and so the way you do that is you push in on the valve, okay, and turn it to 
the right, okay? So you push in, turn to the right, and so when you do that, the valve actually comes out, okay, like a button. Okay, so we're gonna turn that, and I'm holding in on it. Okay, so I'm gonna let that valve out, and you see the tractor coming down. Okay, so that relieved the pressure on the cylinders of the ILS. And we'll let that pressure relieve prior to removing that plug or that screen out of the bottom of that ILS valve. So I can still hear pressure relieving. And the reason it's doing that also, just to make mention of, is because of these accumulators. And so we've got accumulator pressure behind oil on the other side of the accumulator. And so it's holding this tractor up essentially on these ILS cylinders, okay? And I'm gonna back up here and show you. You kind of see how low that tractor is from the ground here now. So it's probably about, I don't know, 14, 15 inches off the ground, you know? So you do have some room, but you don't want to remove any of these valves on this ILS valve assembly or hoses or anything to do with this suspension unless you relieve that pressure okay so we're going to ahead and remove that screen and look at that plug and see if that o-ring looks like it's blown out i've got my ratchet and got my socket on that plug on the bottom side of this ls valve okay and so when i went to remove that that's how loose it was okay so i'm pretty sure that's why the o-ring is blown out on that is because it had came loose or loosened off enough and there was enough pressure there that it blew the o-ring out okay so we've got that valve removed okay and you can see the o-ring is blown out okay it's just about to fall off of there and so yeah that would create a pretty good leak there okay i believe i have one of these valves on the service truck so we're gonna look up that part number and see if we have that. So I went ahead and looked that up in Service Advisor and then also in Parts Advisor. And I was right about that. That is supposed to be a screen, okay? And so I thought, well, there's no screen on that valve that I can see. So I got my O-ring pick and I went up into the port there and this is what I found. Okay, so I pulled this piece of screen out of the port, okay, where the valve screws in. So keep that in mind that it's a good idea to go ahead and investigate what these valves are and what they actually do and the role that they play. Because had we went ahead and installed the new screen in there, not knowing where the other piece of screen was at, okay, then we probably would have went ahead and damaged the new screen valve when we installed it okay so keep that in mind when you're uh, looking at these ILS leaks so we've got our valve reinstalled okay and so we're gonna lock our upper and lower solenoids back in place and how we'll do that is push in on that turn that to the right till it stays in place okay same goes for the rod end we're gonna push in turn to the right until it locks Okay, so those are locked back in place now. And so when we put the shields back on and start the tractor and put the tractor in gear and drive forward, okay, it will raise the front end back up to the, to the um, height that it needs to be. And uh, keep this in mind also, just a real quick tip on this when you're looking at these ILS problems with this style of raise and lower solenoid valves, um, when you relieve that pressure on these, okay, I have had sometimes that after doing that, then shortly after that, um, the customer calls back and he has another leak, okay? And a lot of times I've had these to leak after um, using them to, to relieve the pressure, okay? So keep that in mind. It's not a bad idea to at least uh, communicate that to the customer and uh, that there is a potential that we could have another leak here later on. And I think one thing that really helps with that also, and I did this prior to relieving the pressure on this machine, is I use a uh, can of brake cleaner, 
okay and so i get my brake cleaner and i clean out around where the valve pushes in to clean all of the dirt and the debris out of that and i found out that that helps a lot uh, minimizing these leaks on these valves after relieving the pressure okay so just keep that in mind uh, just a real quick tip on that so i've got the valves reset in the right position and we're going to go ahead and put the shields on and get this tractor up and going so we can get this guy back to uh, planting milo okay guys so we're driving the tractor in the field now got our auto track going we're not actually planting any milo but we're just uh, making sure that the suspension works like it's supposed to and it looks like the suspension came up good and everything looks normal so we're going to uh, go back to the service truck make sure that we don't have any other leaks okay and uh, we'll return this tractor back to the field so quick recap on the 8335r with the uh, leak on the ils suspension valve in the front of the tractor so the customer's complaint was he was planting milo and he noticed that he had a lot of uh, specks and a lot of dirt collecting on his windows and so he got out and looked and had an oil leak on the front of the tractor so we verified the leak um, on the ILS valve we relieved the very important we relieved the pressure on the ILS suspension before removing the valve and you want to make sure you do that on any components that you work on on that ILS suspension valve so we did that relieved the pressure and uh, we found that the screen valve did have a blown o-ring so we removed that installed a new screen valve and uh, ran the tractor verified the leak was fixed and it was the suspension works like it's supposed to so we're gonna return this tractor back to the customer and let him continue on planting milo uh, we're gonna move on to our next job today it's a beautiful day out here in southwest oklahoma and so we got plenty of work to do today so larry the tractor guy signing out